Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to Art of Awakening. My name is Ona Christie, and in this video, we're going to be looking at some pretty tremendous energies coming in for the March equinox of 2023. This is immense, and I'm really excited about this particular time. I'm going to be sharing what I'm getting about the energies of this equinox, as well as a new painting. This is Mary Magdalene, and um, so she's given me some insights. And we're also going to be looking at some of the things that we can do to help us navigate these energies with grace. Okay, so all equinoxes are associated with change and a change of season. And this, the spring season in particular is known for this, right? Clearing, cleansing, flushing out the old and a renewal or building up or springing up of the new. Okay, and so if you're in the southern hemisphere, this is still a huge, just kind of over global energy of spring because there, there, a lot of the powers that be are in the northern hemisphere. But during this spring and equinox of March 2023, these energies of renewal are really being intensely amplified. And we're going to talk about that. But first, a little bit of background. If you've been following me for a while, and many others have been talking about this as well, you know that spiritually the earth is going through a bifurcation process. And that means that it's dividing into two different streams of energy, right? Um, one is the ascension or evolutionary stream moving towards higher vibrational consciousness on this planet. And that's the idea of behind the age of Aquarius, because ultimately this path leads to a more harmonious existence for humanity. Um, the other stream that, of consciousness or uh, stream of energy is the de-evolutionary stream moving towards a lower level of consciousness. So we've got both of these very strongly separating right now. And what this feels to me, um, this particular equinox juncture, is that this bifurcation is beginning its next phase or stage of development. Okay, up until now, the energies of the two separating Earths have largely existed on the spiritual plane. Now, what I'm getting is that we're going to start to see some rapid physical manifestation of these energies. They're going to start to erupt into being. What does that mean? We're going to see some big changes in the world. So there's not going to be any getting back to normal for those who still think of normal as real life in the 3D before 2020. <laughs> okay, so that accustomed reality is over. Uh, life will never again be as we knew it, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? Um, so we're about to explode into an entirely different reality. It's going to look really, really different. The world's going to be, look super different in 10 years, okay? And this is the start of that big change. So this is just a question of which reality is ultimately going to prevail on Earth, okay? So these two parallel realities are the 5D evolving Earth, which is what happens when humanity as a collective or the, the majority of humanity aligns with the natural, organic, evolutionary power of the life force. In humans, the life force energy is known spiritually as the Christ stream when humans operate in full alignment with universal love. Okay, when human, and this doesn't mean it's not a religious thing, okay, it's just uh, Christ being the higher self and, and direct connection with spirit. Okay, so when humans co create with nature through this Christ stream, through this heart of love, it's the Eden impulse. I, that's what I call it anyway, because that's what is going to result in unbelievable prosperity and beauty on the planet once it's fully taken form. This is the unifying force that unifies and transcends polarity. And it's only through the heart that we can truly bring higher vibrational consciousness into the earth plane and anchor it here in order to manifest or create a higher dimension of reality. Okay, this must be done through free will. And this is all about this equinox is, is really bringing these energies down to earth. 
in a big way, okay? The other possibility or the other potential that's here is the devolving Earth, right? So this would be the other side of the bifurcation. This would be the result of humanity aligning itself with artificial de-evolutionary forces, including um, like what they call satanic or dark and luciferian or false light energies. Um, these energies are accessed through the lower centers as opposed to remember the ascending energies through the heart. These uh, devolving devol devolution energies, they're really seeking to hijack the power of a human being through the lower chakras. Okay, and typically they do this through trickery, through manipulation and deception. Okay, the deception can be powerful, it can be very subtle. So it's also being leveraged really, really intensely right now in the media, on social media, in the schools and universities, um, in politics, in the healthcare system, which is why spiritual protection and discernment are really, really important right now. Okay, so right now, both these two scenarios, the evolutionary impulse and the devolutionary um, stream of consciousness, right, they are both right now literally starting to create themselves on the planet physically, simultaneously, at the same time. So the equinox is always a tipping point. This equinox is the tipping point where we're going to see rapid manifestation in both directions at once, okay? So ultimately, there will be another tipping point where one or the other scenario ceases to exist physically on the Earth, okay? And assuming that the Earth continues its ascension course, which is what we're on predominantly, even if the media doesn't seem like it, okay? Um, we are really on an ascension course. Assuming we continue that powerful uh, uh, momentum upwards, we're actually going to be seeing that 5D Earth prevail, right? And ultimately, the devolving Earth will peter out. Um, but this may not happen for, we don't know how long. So we may actually see these two evolution and devolution happening at the same time. And in, in some ways it, it may seem sometimes like the devolution is the ascension so we have to be really really aware of who we are right um and that's where this beautiful ascended master comes in mary magdalene she is the feminine aspect of the christ that's what she embodies right the feminine aspect of the christ uh very very powerful archetype or spirit that is here for us at this time to assist in this whole process, right, of, of bringing the Christ stream in for humanity and for us to begin to really manifest this. So, by the way, if you want to go a little bit deeper into the nitty-gritty of the creative process and manifestation and how that's happening right now. I've written this all up on my blog. I'm going to leave the link in the description. And for those of you that want a deeper dive into this topic, <laughs> um, that's there. And I really encourage you to do that. But for now, let's look at, uh, go back to these energies of March, 2023. Um, these are immense creative manifesting energies being set into motion at this time okay so this is a really really powerful time for anybody who is creating and that means all of us right because no matter whether you're conscious of it or not your thoughts are always consistently creating things okay so when as we move through this portal it's going to be an amazing time for visualizing and for allowing creative impulses to flow through right and for being really receptive there's also um what i'm feeling in conjunction with this a, a very strong contraction in the field right um so this is march and in this spring season or fall if you're in the in the southern hemisphere we may see a lot of elemental activity earth water fire air and ether um 
acting in powerful ways, okay? As these purifying energies move through the physical plane of the earth and she begins to integrate them in a physical way, she does that through the elements, okay? It's a purging, dynamic, and releasing energy, okay? And this is an energy that's setting things in motion, but it's really clearing things out. So purging, clearing, detoxification, breaking down. And this energetic flow is also going to affect the astral plane and the emotional fields of the earth and her inhab inhabitants. So many of us may experience upheavals at the emotional level, as well as there may be triggering spiritual events. This may not be a bad thing. Again, right? It could include experiences of great bliss, as well as potential of discomfort. It all depends on where you are at in your journey and on your life path. So I really encourage all of us to release judgment around any perceived suffering. Um, any challenges happening at this time are serving to catalyze people into action, okay? And to drive them deeper to whichever stream that they're in, okay? Whatever stream that their soul has chosen which means that we're likely to have another wave of spiritual awakenings happening over the next few months, right? Triggered by these energies. There may also be a wave of souls exiting the material plane. This does not mean that these people have chosen a lower path, right? And this is very personal for me as my mom just let me know that she's been given not very long to live um, she's being extremely graceful. Um, I think she's really embodying some of these beautiful divine feminine energies in this process. But what I'm getting around her is that she's devoted her life to music. She's been here to bring beauty into the world through a very dark time. Her soul is ready to leave. Her soul is not up to, like, it's not here for this whole transition. So she'll be reincarnating some time in the future when it's ripe for her to bring that, um, you, you know, her sole purpose of bringing the beauty and the music in or whatever it is that she works on it and her next personality, right? Um, but it's like, it's her time. And I never thought I'd lose her this early. She's only 81, but hey, you know, it's, it's this time. So not every soul that leaves the earth plane right now is on the descending. A lot of them may be actually on the ascending. They're looking to upgrade into a new physical body when they come back, all right? Or some of them may actually go on to other places in the universe. Um, so keep in mind, right? It's just a time of transition. And this is just one more type of transition, right? So that's with the astral plane and the, the kind of spiritual things going on physically on the earth. We could potentially have an increase in violent windstorms, flooding, fires, um, possibly additional earthquakes as elemental forces are activated. Um, things could potentially get explosive and there's so much potential for so many things to happen, okay? And the more that we consciously work with these elementals, right? We can actually consciously ask the waters and the winds and the fires and the ether, right? And the earth herself, we can work with them just like a midwife works with the mother, soothing her and calming her so that things go smoothly. We can just play that same role. We can tune into the elements. We can ask them to, you know, just, just give them our support, ask for the winds to blow gently. Politically, we can also see analogous happenings, right? Could be disclosures, could be inflammatory actions, could be emotionally charged accusations. It could also be people coming together, people speaking their truth people setting boundaries in a peaceful way, right? So these energies don't have to be violent. They do not have to be unpleasant, right? And, and, and we can, change can happen in, in many ways. At the personal level, this could look like sudden revelations, right? So we could be really connecting with our guides. Could be physical changes, could be weight gain, weight loss, acute illness, inflammation, ascension symptoms, could be tingling sensations, ear ringing, could be accidents, but it could also be amazing, you know, healings, right? Um, could be emotional ups and downs, 
could be a lot of need for purging and cleansing, right? A good time perhaps for any kind of fast or a clearing or cleanse. Um, and there could be really intense spiritual experiences. These energies can be received in very blissful and positive ways. Um, receiving spiritual downloads, right? Just feelings of bliss, release of anxiety, waves of well-being as lower energies release could be financial or business breakthroughs or connections made at this time. So when I was feeling into these energies and I got this feeling like, um, it's time to do a painting and that will really help with this message. And the first thing that I was really shown was Mary Magdalene was coming forward and I was being asked to paint Mary Magdalene again. And if you recall last fall, I painted um, a very different portrait of Mary, Mary Magdalene of the sea, which was a lot of watery energy. This one is full of fire. And the first image that I received when I tuned into Mary Magdalene with these, you know, March energies uh, um, in, in mind, the very first image was very pure white. And I'm, but as I started to paint and actually physically get the paint on the canvas, first of all, I was directed to use a canvas that had been used before. And it wasn't a piece of art. It was just I, I had used it as a, a sign, right? So I was directed to use that one and I had to put layers and layers of paint over it. So I started with white paint, right? Because it was this white that I was seeing and that everything showed through it, right? And so I needed to cover it up with dark and I ended up covering it up with red and then with black and all these red and reds and blacks are coming in. These are not colors I usually use, but Mary was with me the whole time. And I began to be shown that this white image that I was seeing, it may be one that I paint in the future, but the red and the black had to come through first. She had to come through that. And as I painted, um, I was directed towards certain things. And one of them um, was the Adi Shakti mantra, which is a mantra to the divine feminine. Um, and it's Adi Shakti, Adi Shakti, Adi Shakti, Namo Namo, really surrendering to the great mother energy. Okay, so the words to the Adi Shakti mantra are all in here. And then I was called to paint her and she came in with the, uh, these beautiful, beautiful big eyes and her forehead glowing, right? And remember, this is um, one of the beautiful manifesting chakras, right? Is the third eye, the vision. Um, I consider it a feminine chakra along with the heart and the sacral. Um, Mary Magdalene symbolizes the harmonizing on the feminine side of the third eye chakra and the sacral through the heart. And she, after I had done her portrait, um, I was looking at this and I saw that she had a mudra that she wanted to bring forward. And in my mind's eye, I saw this kind of templed fingers and then the word Shakti again. So I looked up Shakti mantra and absolutely, except it wasn't the fingers I was expecting, it was these. So this is the Shakti um, mudra, which is a hand position where you do it with um, your last two fingers here and then you curl these other fingers over your thumbs and hold it like that and you can hold this mudra and it also helps to bring in the divine uh, mother energy the shakti and so this is what i'm feeling is moving through the earth really really strongly right now Mary Magdalene is showing us some practices that we can use to assist in integrating these energies and calling in that energy. Now, a um, couple things that she's been telling me. One, um, and I've been sitting with this image a lot as I've painted it, um, there's a lot of energy around the menstruation and the, the afterbirth, those kind of purging on the very deep physical level. Part of the manifestation is the purge before the new life takes hold in the womb. The womb needs to be cleared and cleansed. Um, and this happens both before, right, before conception has to clear and cleanse before the new ovulation happens and, and conception can happen. 
Um, and then after the birth, also we have another clearing and cleansing um, of the, the afterbirth, the placenta, right? So both of these are very connected with the energies. And what I'm getting is that part of what's happening right now is a clearing and purging of any energies and beliefs of shame, okay? Especially around the body being physical, of being uh, of the feminine side of the being, right? Um, there's a lot of religious programming that has placed a lot of shame around the feminine. Um, a lot of shame around the body, which corresponds to the feminine, a lot of shame around uh, womanhood and being female. And so she, as I was painting this, she was really working with me to understand some of these things. Um, when I looked into menstruation, um, I learned some interesting things. Um, one is that humans are one of very, very few species who even does menstruate. Most animals don't, right? Um, and of the, the ones that do, humans are the ones, the only ones that really menstruate heavily. So there's something about humanity that requires this menstrual purging because we are genetically different. We're spiritually different in, in very profound ways. The reason we menstruate so heavily is that we have to build a very thick uterine wall because a human fetus human embryo will burrow very, very deeply and much more deeply than most animals. You know, the placenta really, really digs in. And so we have to build this in order to hold that. And so that uncovered uh, a very prevalent feeling right now of the fetus or the embryo equates to a parasite. Okay, this, this, understanding of the fetus as a parasite. And what Mary Magdalene is showing me is that this is this is not part of the life stream, right? Okay, we, there are different ways that we can frame things and we can look at things from different polarities. So what she's showing me is that we have to be very, very conscious of how we frame things and how we look at things and we can choose. We can choose to look at things from the perspective of and tune into our divine feminine, whether you're a man or a woman, we can tune into the divine feminine, feminine energies within us and choose to look at things with a life-affirming viewpoint. And if you do that, looking at the fetus within the womb, you can also look at it from the point of view of the human embryo is something very different and very special. It needs more nourishment at some level from the mother. There's a great need in the human psyche, and it starts at the spiritual level, for a deep connection with the mother. We need more mothering, okay? And the reason I feel on the spiritual level that the embryo digs in so deep is because of this deep, deep need for extra mothering on the part of the human spirit. We need that divine mother. And so you can look at the, the need to build up a, a bigger, thicker layer of uterine tissue as, as, a, as a protective mechanism, you know, protecting us against this parasite. Or you could look at it as our mother energy has to be very, very fully developed and activated. And we have to go above and beyond to hold and to contain and to provide for the spark of life that wants to come forward, right? As, and, and, and this is a, as the physically embodied female, but this also goes for our divine feminine selves, no matter what gender or sex preference or whatever you have, um, we all have a divine mother within us. That's part of our psychic being, right? And so what she's telling me is, there are very, very deep levels of shame and fear around being embodied, around being part of the physical world. And I think this goes back to the story of the fall 
um, virtually every religion has some sort of story of the fall connected with humans being on the planet. And what Mary Magdalene is showing me is that being here on this level, yes, we had to come down, right, spiritually to a lower vibration in order to be here. And what she's telling me is that this isn't, that we need to release shame around this, right? Because humans are this divine bridge. We are, as a species, this bridge between the spiritual and the the manifest, the physical. That's why humans are like we need to go with the heart. The heart is a bridge between spirit and you know the the spiritual energy centers and the material energy centers. And when we hold ourselves in the heart energy, that's when we can successfully integrate all of this. And what she's saying here with this beautiful gesture, this mudra and the Adi Shakti mantra is that we can move through this with grace and with ease when we allow ourselves to open and to receive and to allow these incredibly powerful divine feminine, divine mother energies to flow through us without shame or guilt and allow her to purify our, uh, our, our psyches, to purify our bodies at this time and to come into a deep sense of gratitude and of appreciation of our physical bodies, of the physical earth around us, of all creation. This is going to help us through whatever purging or destructive energies are happening on the earth right now to understand them as a natural clearing out of things that had been supportive of the old structure, right? But there's a new one, a new cycle that we're coming in. So we have to purge whatever was wanting to support the old so that we can build up a new, right? And that's going to support the new energies coming in, which are beautiful, right? How do we work with these energies? I think it's super, super important to realize that this beautiful opening of the divine feminine is a huge portal and it's allowing so many more people and, and all of us at a much, much greater level to open and receive our intuitive guidance, the spirit guidance. Um, it's a huge opening for receiving downloads and receiving blessings right now. So just keeping that in mind and keeping the vision that th we are creating something beautiful here. There is no, absolutely no doubt, doubt. Hold the faith. We're here to hold the faith. We are creating an amazing future on this planet. I've seen glimpses of it. It is shining and beautiful, right? We're just moving through, <laughs> you know, certain interesting uh, times, right, that are paving the way for it, but we are birthing something incredibly beautiful and wonderful. Really feel into your heart. What does your heart want, right? Um, follow your bliss and fear not to follow. It's so easy right now to focus on what's not working, right? There's so many things trying to grab our attention to what's not working or this problem or that problem or this horrible person or those horrible people, right? Um, remember, every human being is a human being and we all have hearts, right? So focus on the light in yourself and focus on the light in others, even those who you may not see eye to eye with, recognize that there is a heart light within them as well. And the more we focus on the light, the more we bring it into the world, right? Where attention goes, energy flows. Um, okay, so on a physical level, we might want to think about uh, body purification, um, you know, fasting, lemon, kundalini yoga, working out, anything like that will purify the body. Great practice right now. And then finally, coming together in community, great, right? because that really activates the heart space. 
Um, you can come together in community with spirits or your spirit guides through meditation and prayer. You can come together in community with nature, just going out into nature, commune with her. She will teach you all sorts of things. And we can come together in community with others. So with that in mind, I would like to invite you to my Heart of the Equinox membership event. Um, this is part of my Lightworkers Cafe private membership group. It is free to attend and free to join. So if this is something that draws you, we're going to be just coming together in community and holding space, holding space in the heart, the sacred space of the heart in community together um, with a probably guided meditation ritual just being together. And this is going to really hold space for these beautiful divine feminine mother energies to really come in in a big way. Um, this will be right on March 20th at 5 p.m. Eastern. So it will the actual equinox will happen during this gathering. And um, I invite you to join us then. And remember, you were born to be free. And by the way, I'm calling this painting Mary Magdalene Shakti Power. I will be putting her on my website for sale. Usually when there's a painting with this kind of power in it, there will be one person who really resonates with this, that this painting is meant for. The financing option on the website, and I'm offering prints as well. And the links to both the original and the prints will be in the description box.